Hey, this is Max here, and in this tutorial, you will learn how you can validate email addresses inside ManyChat so that you can keep your email list clean, which I think is really important because you really want to keep your bounce rate low so that actually more emails get delivered to the people who want them. So before we go to dive in, the flows that I'm about to show you, you will also find in the description below so that you can just import them and change them to your own needs. So let's just dive right in. So this is what a regular email capture flow looks like. You can obviously do this in lots of different ways, but this is just how I like to do it. So let me explain how this works and then I will show you how you can use a tool called Neverbounce in your flow to check if an email address really exists and also if it's not a disposable email address. So I like to start my flow with something that sets the expectation that we're going to ask for an email address. So I say, shall I send you the manager cheat sheet by email, this is really important, to help you get started with ManyChat. So then we set the expectation so that people know, okay, hey, it's probably going to ask for an email address in the next step. So that there is still an easy way out. And then also if they click yes, awesome, they basically do like a micro commitment. They tell themselves, yes, I want this. So that in the next step where we're actually going to ask for the email address, the chances are higher that they're actually going to give it. Now to ask their email address, we're going to use a user input. So user input is used to capture an input from the subscriber. And then if you want also store it inside a custom field or inside system field. So in this case, we ask, what is your email address? And then we set the reply type to email so that ManyChat knows, okay, the subscriber should give an email address now. And then by doing that, you can also save the email into the email system field if you enable this. And then ManyChat will also show a retry message if the answer is incorrect. So if they type something that is not an email address, then this message will appear. And then together with that message, also a skip button will appear so that they can just skip the user input and continue to the next block. Now that is also why we continue to the next step. And the next step is a condition. And then inside that condition, we check if the email system field has any value. Because if it does not have any value, then we know, okay, the subscriber actually skipped this question. They did not give their email address. So then we say, I can send your checklist without your email address. Are you sure you want to skip this step? And you'll be really surprised with how many people are going to say, ok, I'll try again. And then they just go back to this block. And then we ask again, what is your email address? Now, and then if they're going back into the condition, the email has any value, then we just say, thanks check your inbox in about five minutes. And that is how you do a regular email capture. But now we really want to validate if an email address really exists and if it is not disposable. So we're going to use a tool for that called Neverbounce. So what Neverbounce basically does, you give them an email address, they do their magic and it will tell you, okay, this email address really exists. It is valid, it is catch all, it is disposable, it is invalid or unknown. And why I really like using them is because it's just super simple and it's also very affordable. So when you create a new account here, you can test 1000 email addresses for free. And after that, you just pay as you go. It's really very affordable. I know that if you have a thousand email addresses that you want to validate, then you only pay eight bucks, or maybe you only have two new email addresses every month, then you only pay 160. So it's really not so much. I really, really like using them. So what I recommend you doing is create a new account over here, and then we'll show you in a bit how you can work with it. So then this is our flow where we edit the Neverbounce steps basically. Those are these three or actually four blocks. So let me just start beginning from the start and then we'll show you how this works. So here, this is all the same. And then this is already slightly different. So here, when we ask, what is your email address? We are not going to save the email to the system field because we only want to store an email address inside the system field when we know, okay, this really exists. Like this email address is a valid email address. So what we do instead is we save the response to a custom field. Now I created a new custom field or user field called response. I just use this for a bunch of different things to capture responses. So I just called it response. So when they give an email address, it will be stored in there. And then everything else is also the same. Now then we automatically continue to the condition. And then inside the condition, we check 
does the response user field contain at? Because if it contains at, then we know, okay, cool, that person gave an email address and then we continue. If not, then this is also the same. Then we just say, I can send you the checklist without your email address. Are you sure you wanna skip this step? Now then over here, inside this external request, this is basically where the magic happens. So to make this work, we first have to go over to Neverbounds, go to apps and create a new app. So I'm going to call this ManyChat Email Validator. And then here I click Webhook. And then if you want, you can set an alert for when you cannot validate so many email addresses anymore. So I'm not doing that over here. And then I click here, create app. Now this looks all a bit taggy. You don't really have to think about that. Just copy this whole URL, copy this thing, and then go back to the flow, create your external request and inside the external request, just paste this, then remove the last part and then add a variable called response because our email address or the email address that the subscriber gave, we store in the response user field, right? So that's why we add that over here. So by this, we just tell Neverbounds, hey, validate what is inside the response user field, which is an email address. Now then when we do that, we get a response back from Neverbounds. I can also show you that if I just here type an email address. So this is my own email address, test the request, then you see that we get some data back. Now you don't really have to think about that. You just only need to have to focus on this. The result is valid. So you will see also here, if I just type something random, test the request, then it will say here result is invalid. So we wanna store the value of a result, which in this case is invalid, into another user field. So to do that, we're going to need response mapping. And you see that I already did it here. You just type a dollar sign dot result. So just this. And then you have to select the custom field you want to store it into. So I created another user field called multi field. And this is also something I use for different temporary things basically. So then I'm going to fix this. I will add response back here. So what it does right now is we ask for an email address. It will be stored into the response user field. Then we check if the response user field contains at. If it contains at, then we trigger an external request to check with Neverbounds. Does that email address really exist? Then we get a response back and then with response mapping, we store the result into the multi-field user field. Now then we automatically continue to a condition and inside this condition, we check the values of that user field. So you see here, multi-field is valid. If not, check if the multi-field is catch all. If not, check if the multi-field is disposable. If not, check if the multi-field is invalid. If not, check if the multi-field is unknown. If not, and then we just continue and then we'll explain a bit what that is for. So here, if it is valid or catch all, then we just continue to this action. If it's not one of these things, if it's disposable, invalid or unknown, then we just say, sorry, that doesn't seem like a correct email address. Please try again. Now, then when we say here, please try again, this is completely the same as the previous user input. So we just set this to email response. Then we have our retry message and a skip button. And then this next step, we just go back over here so that we just do the whole thing again. Now, if the user does not match any of these conditions, then we also go to this action. Now, what this action does, and it's a little bit complicated, and what we wanna do is we wanna store the value of the response user field into the email system field. So unfortunately, there is no action for this, which blows my mind a bit, but you can only set a custom field, but you cannot set a system field. So I had to find a little workaround. And for that, we're going to need the ManyChat API, which is also a little bit taggy. But again, if you just import the example, you barely don't have to change anything with it. So we're going to use this to store the response into the email system field. So that works like this. So you set the header to accept application JSON authorization. Then you start with bearer space, 
And then you have to go over to your settings, to your API. You have to copy this API key and then you just have to paste that in here. Now the body starts with a curly bracket, ends with a curly bracket. And then we say here, subscriber ID. And then we just add the user ID variable here, email. Then we add the response user fields variable because that's where the email address is in, right? And then has opt in to email. This tells ManyChat like, okay, um, did this person opt in for email addresses or not? So you do not really want to change that here. You just use the variable. So it will just store inside that thing if the person already did that or not. So it doesn't really change it. It's just using the current value. Now that is basically all you have to know about this. So the only thing you have to do when you import this flow is change this token and then everything else will do itself. And then we say, thanks, check your email address or check your inbox in about five minutes. Now, let me demonstrate how this works. So I would just publish this. Then we're going over to Messenger, I click preview. Then you see here, shall I send you the manager cheat sheet by email to help you get started with ManageJet? Yes, awesome. Now, then you'll see here, if I just type something random, then it says, please enter a correct email address. For example, me at meal.com. So this is, let me show it to you over here. This is our retry message. So this is not the validator. So if I then type like a, a, an email address that does not exist, then we just type it over here. And then we get back, sorry, that doesn't seem like a correct email address. Please try again. So never bounce, just check if this email address really exists. So if I then type another email address that does exist, then we do that over here. And then it says, thanks, check your inbox in about five minutes. And that is how you validate an email address inside ManyChat. So it is a bit taggy, but luckily never bounce is really easy to use. The thing that I'm most frustrated about is that we could not just use an action to change the value of the email system field, but that we need the ManyChat API for that. But again, if you just import this flow, which you can find below this video, then you only have to change the token and then everything else will just work. So I hope that this is helpful. I hope this will help you to keep your email address clean and if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments below and I'll be super happy to help you out.